Hi everyone. So just a few quick things kind of coming up on my channel. So I've been filming, um, I wanted to film a video on, um, kind of my healing story or healing journey. I've been sharing a lot of videos regarding kind of insights on healing, thoughts on healing, but I wanted to share like my actual journey when it came to um, receiving some healing in my life regarding the physical things that I was going through. And I just really wanted to share kind of that whole journey, including like my discouragement, my frustration, what I did that didn't work, the realizations I was having, etc. But before I post that, I really just want to make a disclaimer that, um, you know, when I say the things I do, you know, keep in mind, those are my experiences, those are my fears, those are my thoughts at the time, and kind of just what everything looks like for me. But I had mentioned a few things in the video. I just want to make sure no one, like, tries to come off medication or not seek medical advice if their doctor told them something. When I say, uh, um, God is above any doctor, you know, what I mean is, and God uses a lot of different means to heal, but he is, he is above that, that sickness or that physical pain or that disease. But really what I allude to in that video is beyond the sickness that we deal with in this life or the physical pain. I'm talking about the healing that only God can bring the love your heart cries out for most, you know, beyond that physical thing in your life, you know, when it comes to our pain, not only in that sickness and struggle, but all the pain that we've been through in our lives, <clears throat> that love that heals, that your heart cries out for most, that only God can give, and not just any love, but his supernatural love. So I just want to make that clear um, before I start posting those videos. <clears throat> it might just be me overthinking, but I just want to make sure I'm not responsible for anyone doing certain things or mimicking the things that I did in the video, which is why I tried to go into everything. But anyways, sorry for the long <laughs> intro. So today's video, I want to encourage you to at least stick around to the end because there is something that God has repeatedly been ministering to me um, that I believe is really important. Um, and it's just kept coming up when I have been spending time with God. So I encourage you to stay till the end of this video. But if you don't stay till the end, you can um, you can fast forward to kind of the end part. I can't tell you like the time stamp because I'm filming this video for the first time. But I encourage you to at least stay till the end of the video or go to the end of the video so you can hear that part of what I'm going to mention. It has been really huge in my life. And if you struggle with your relationship with God, um, then, or you don't, it can still be extremely valuable and insightful. And like I said, it's something that God has really been repeating when I've been spending time with him that I feel like just needs to, needs to be shared. So we already have a pretty long intro going for this video, but today's video is going to be something that I just felt coming up this morning, and I just started kind of typing it out on my phone. So this is not quite going to be like a testimony, but I wanted to share kind of things that helped me when I was 
going through the hardest times in my life. And I want to share how God had worked through um, the depression that I had struggled with. Um, and like I said, things that just helped me and realizations I had in my walk with God. And um, yeah. So here we go. So the first thought that came up this morning was the enemy tries to destroy lives. We not only see this through the destruction and pain he tries to bring into people's lives, but in some cases, the enemy literally doesn't want you to be alive. And I've said it before, but I really believe that's where a lot of my depression and suicidal thoughts came from was, you know, the enemy didn't want me to be here to be able to fulfill the life God had for me to even be sitting here and being able to minister to you guys and talk about this time in my life that I was able to get through that I never thought I could. But I started thinking about this and I started contrasting it to, right, so the enemy tries to destroy lives. And I've been thinking about the verses a lot, you know, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may, that they may have it more abundantly. The Bible also talks about the enemy. He says he goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So that is the enemy. That is what the enemy does in our lives. That is what the enemy does in this world. He literally tries to devour people. Um, and when I think about this, I think a perfect like statement of a summary of what the enemy does is he tries to destroy lives. And I think about this um, in a number of ways. Um, I think about the pain people have been through that the enemy has tried to wreck into people's lives. I think about people that are hurting, people that are suffering, people that have a purpose on their life because we all have a purpose on our life. But the enemy tries to destroy and tries to keep us from walking in that he also tries to keep us from coming to god so i believe the enemy he's constantly attacking after going through like spiritual warfare for so long and and not being aware of what was happening for a long time because you will have some people tell you that it's mental or emotional it's not from the enemy but after going through that for so long you know, it's like the enemy, he, he just, he tries to destroy people's lives. That they can never walk in the purpose um, that is on their life. And he tries to keep people from coming to God. How does he do this? He does this by trying to bring pain into people's lives. Trying to get people to turn away from God. Because I believe when, when, when your soul is just absolutely shattered from things you have been through, experiences in this life, we need a power so much greater than ourselves, so much beyond our own strength. A supernatural power and love that can heal the deepest wounds that can bring restoration and I believe that is found only in God and so of course especially if this pain and suffering is from the enemy of course he does not want you to come to God and experience that the enemy wants to destroy lives like that's who he is he wants to destroy you and that's not to make us afraid. It's just for us to have awareness. <laughs> but he doesn't want you to ever come to God so you can experience that restoration 
of everything that the enemy has ever tried to do in your life spiritually, especially if it comes from him, if he's the one that has tried to destroy your life, then he is going to try to keep you from coming to God. And he's going to do that by trying to bring pain into your life, trying to bring suffering into your life, that you will end up turning away from God. And he also just wants to turn as many people away from God as possible. But I believe that's a huge way he works. And that echoes what we see in the Bible when it says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about my own life and my own experiences and story, and contrasting this to the life we have found only in Jesus. So regarding my own personal experiences, um, something I've wondered about for a long time is why when I was struggling, Jesus didn't take away the depression that I had been through for years. Because I cannot tell you how many times I would see in YouTube comments, someone would say, you know, Jesus healed my depression or whatever they were going through. And I would see that. And I planted a seed, don't get me wrong, that that could be possible for me too. But I wondered so many years, especially um, when I had believed that God could heal the depression. I wondered, you know, does God want that for me? You know, am I ever going to have a life where that is gone? When that was all I knew for so long. And I wondered, you know, had I not experienced that, like other people had shared in comments, you know, like I said, would I ever know that kind of life where I wasn't struggling and suffering in that way anymore? Or was this something that God wanted me to have? Because I, I will be honest, when I was struggling for so long, I started looking at my mental health struggles that I had walked through. I, I'd experienced like things getting better, but that deep depression was there for a long time and the suicidal thoughts were there for a long time. Um, for those that don't know, I used to hear voices. Uh, um, you can look at like a more full story of that. There's a video I have on my channel called Part of My Testimony. <clears throat> but for a long time, I was struggling with that. So then I had experienced the voices being gone, the voices being taken away. But I struggled immensely with like severe depression and suicidal thoughts for like a really, really long time. I was grateful that, you know, I wasn't experiencing what I was before that things were getting better but I definitely I definitely wondered if I would ever be free from that from all of it and when I was struggling for so long and felt like it wasn't getting better um I started seeing me going through those struggles as a privilege because if I hadn't walked through them personally, I would never know exactly what someone is experiencing that is walking through that. And I would never have the privilege of being able to help people. But when I started seeing things in that way, because I felt like nothing was changing for so long, you know, I felt like maybe that's what God wanted. Maybe I was just supposed to have this struggle where I get to feel the weight of that struggle every day where I feel like I'm barely hanging on. So I can feel what other people are going through, like the, to the exact extent of like, the hopelessness and the darkness and the despair that they are feeling and walking through. <clears throat> but 
but got to watch as God sustain me through all of that. When I felt like I was just hanging on by a thread. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. You know, I thought that God had wanted me to to carry that in my life. Like that was just going to be my life. That was just going to be my struggle. Like I started seeing it in that way. Because like I said, it was not getting better. Nothing was changing. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm just supposed to have this. And I don't know about you, but many of us can feel that way when we feel like we've been struggling for so long or hurting. But I've wondered why, when I was struggling, like I said, Jesus didn't take away the depression. And I'm not speaking for anyone else's situation, but this is something that has kept coming up. If it does resonate with you, then I hope it can bring you comfort. But I'm just speaking for my circumstances and what I had been through in my life and why the Lord didn't just take away the depression. On top of the fact that there was such a deep pain there that needed time to heal. So why I believe Jesus didn't take away the depression was that he wanted to build a relationship with me. So he could have taken it away, but he saw and knew how I had experienced rejection in my life and hurt from people and how I struggled to trust anyone, that anyone would be there for me when I was hurting most and when no one really understood what was going on. And for so many years in my life, I didn't have anyone that just wanted to stay in my life and show me they would be there through thick and thin. And I really didn't have any friends. Um, For anyone that relates, um, ever since I was young, I just would come across different ganging up dynamics in my life. I'm not going to necessarily say like bullying situation, but just different people in my life kind of ganging up against me or um, I would go to school and you know, I would encounter, and not every single person keeps that in mind, but I would always seem to encounter someone that, you know, just wanted to hurt me. Um, and I realized <laughs> now as an adult, I don't mean to laugh, it's not funny, but, you know, for so long I thought when I got older, all that would like go away. But being an adult now, I realize, you know, that has been my life. And it's something I've experienced repeatedly. And I just want you to know, if you relate to that, that um, you can feel like, you know, what am I doing? There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. Okay, And sometimes the enemy will use those very experiences to try to, what I call, deliver maximum pain possible into your life. So the enemy knows pain is very, very, very powerful. The enemy knows pain is very powerful in a way where the hopelessness it can make you feel and the way it can make you just want to give up on your life. And I believe he knows that pain, pain can be very, very, very powerful and can really affect us. Um, So please understand if you have been through that, if you've encountered that in your life repeatedly, 
sometimes it's literally all that stuff is um, from the enemy to try to bring all this pain into your life. So that was my life, okay? And I share this because I know that somewhere out there, probably on my channel at least, but somewhere out there, there are people that have experienced these kind of experiences throughout your life. And these experiences can lead to depression later on in life. I really believe that rejection, hurt, um, pretty much in any way, a human can bring pain to you. And I know for me personally, a lot of my depression that I had dealt with, a lot of the pain that I felt stemmed from experiencing these things, even though they'd happened when I was really young, I knew a lot of it really came from having all these negative and painful experiences. And so, like I said, for so many years of my life, I didn't have anyone that just wanted to stay in my life and show me they would be there through thick and thin. I didn't really have any friends for so long. God, I believe, wanted to be that person. That relationship that was there every time I felt completely overwhelmed, giving me the love I didn't receive and embracing me in the midst of every pain. And what I didn't understand to looking back, you know, it's like God was that relationship. Like instead of me just experiencing the depression being taken away, it's like every single time I came to God through all these years, right? So it's very interesting because it's like I had all these years of pain, but God, through relationship with Him, it's like over time through those years of struggling it was like he wanted to give me the love that i didn't receive all these years he wanted to be there for me and show me he was there for me through everything through all these years And show me that he was embracing me through every pain. But do you understand? And I'm not saying it's going to be the same for anyone. But just speaking from personal experience. He he did that. He, he showed me he was there over um, a matter of many years. You know, over time, he was showing me this in relationship with him. Instead of just taking it away, it's like all those times God was redeeming those years of pain. That even when the darkness didn't lift, he wouldn't leave. He was the one holding my hand and walking through it with me every step of the way. And I look back and I realize that God could have taken in a way but when pain comes into my life again or another storm hits i would have been left in a similar place feeling completely alone instead of knowing the one that was there through everything when nothing was changing and all i felt was deep and immense pain, the relationship I had with him became everything. The only thing that could get me through my darkest moments, his ever-present love, and it wasn't based on the suffering I was going through, but the one who was surrounding me in the midst of all of it. I came to treasure that relationship I have with him that I had a heavenly father I could run to when everything is crashing around me, his ever-present steady and unwavering love sustaining me every time I felt afraid or completely overwhelmed. 
the one who would see me through even when I couldn't comprehend it and felt I would never make it through. And it was almost as if life outside of this relationship with God drifted out of sight and paled in comparison to everything I had in him. <clears throat> so I just think of it this way. So I don't know if you guys have like a specific room that you go in to spend time with God. For me, it's normally just whatever is like my bedroom. But for me, it's like that room becomes the place where I, I spend time with God, be, becomes a solace, a sanctuary, a place of peace, you know, where I get to spend time with God and just know his presence is there in the room with me. Obviously, his presence is anywhere I go. But just to have that place where I can go and God is ministering to me, you know, kind of outside of the world, outside of the things happening, um, perhaps around me, that space, that time, that place, and I'm not even talking about like a physical place, but, you know, it's like, here in this corner of my life are these problems happening or these struggles or this pain. But when I'm in God's presence and I'm spending time with him, it's like that problem or that pain just fades and disappears in the light of his love. And it reminds me of the verse um, in First John, and I, I I use this verse a lot, but I also believe it applies to this, and I've seen it work in this way in my life. You know, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. It's like there can be so many things happening in my life, you know. Um, like I said, you know, circumstances where I'm struggling with different things or there's different pain. But it's like when I'm in his presence, when I am being met in his perfect love, it casts out those fears. When I'm being reminded of the, the, the comfort of his love just surrounding me, that he is with me there in that moment. It's like all those things fade away. It might not be that way when I'm not spending time with God. Like things may feel really overwhelming. But when I'm with him, when I'm spending time with him, when he is just meeting me in his love because love is who he is, You know, it's like all that stuff in my life seems to drift out of sight. Now, at the time, when I wasn't spending time with God, I felt like I was drowning. In the midst of a sea, clinging onto a rock in the middle, as it felt like waves are pounding over my head, trying to sweep me off the rock and out into the midst of the sea where I'd be lost and without hope. But with God, I had the strength to keep going, even though it had felt all my human strength had run out and I had nothing left. But my relationship with him was what held me together when I felt I was unraveling. His ever-present love as he held me close to his heart. There's a verse in the Bible, I can't remember what book, but it says he gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. And it was in that place, you know, where I, I poured out my heart to him, sometimes silently, but just knowing I had a place to lay everything down and get all my pain out was so important. Sometimes it was through the falling of seemingly endless tears into my pillow, what felt like thousands of nights. 
But what I didn't understand is that every time I ran to God and spent time with him, and you know, this doesn't always mean in like the formal ways that we learn, right? We learn, you know, reading the word and praying. So like I mentioned, you know, for me, sometimes it's meant just talking to God being completely honest with him, crying into my pillow, getting all of that pain out. What I didn't understand is that every time I ran to God and spent time with him, his love was binding my wounds and the deepest pain I had carried inside. I didn't know if it was possible for it to be healed. And now it was through his love, through relationship with him, as different scriptures spoke truth to my heart. And I came to understand more and more his love for me. I had held on to this relationship I had with God, thinking that's all I would have. But it was the only thing with the power to help me through. But I never realized till over time there was a healing happening and it was his love he loves you you are loved you are not completely alone he is there with you through everything he is always waiting with open arms to love you i don't know what you have been through or how you've been treated by people but your mind and the enemy is lying to you you are loved infinitely more than you can even imagine you are loved that is the truth it's a lifelong relationship that we have with him, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's never a moment we're ever separated from him, not even death. This, why, this is why I believe Paul says, you know, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? He says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. And he says later, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there was this period of time where um, I had gone for prayer because I felt God leading me to go for prayer to a place for my heart. And um, I'm just going to be honest, you know, when people lay hands on you, it can be kind of scary, um, which fun fact, don't just let anyone lay hands on you. Um, so you never know what kind of spirit might be, um, working through a person. I will just say that, um, there can be a false Holy Spirit that has come into a lot of Christian churches. Someone could have had this spirit imparted to them. And so if someone lays hands on you and it's not the Holy Spirit, you know, it's just not good. Um, I'm not going to encourage you to look that up. Um, cause you really can't unsee it, but I will just say, I have come across videos like that people having, um, demonic manifestations, um, kind of after having hands laid on them. 
and I have seen videos, therefore I have this fear when it comes to kind of people laying hands. I always want to make sure like this person has the Holy Spirit and they're operating through the Holy Spirit and there's nothing sketchy that they're saying essentially. I know we went, <laughs> we went from like one message all the way to like swung on a pendulum to the other side, but I promise I have something with this. So basically at this time, um, I had had people pray for me and, um, I felt God leading me to go there, but I was just trying to gauge. I'm like, Oh, is there anything sketchy? Is there anything sketchy? But I kind of started getting in this place of fear and paranoia right after they had prayed for me, thinking somehow that God wasn't the one that had led me there. The enemy was the one that had led me there. And now they had somehow affected my relationship with God, somehow, um, like, not imparted a spirit per se, but like my relationship with God did not feel the same after this prayer. I'm not going to lie. Now I had no idea like someone was doing things behind my back spiritually, or I was in the environment where someone was doing things. I had no idea any of that either. So that adds another layer, but basically I want to share kind of a few things that um, had come up. So one thing that had come up, you know, in the beginning of the prayer, this person had mentioned, you know, have you surrendered things to God? Um, um, and because, right, I was trying to, like, go for healing. Like, that's what they were praying for. So at the time they had said something like that and then I had asked them, you know, cause I, <laughs> I kid you not when I reached out to them and I just was like, what happened? What did you do? You know, but, and I feel bad reaching out like that, but my relationship with God felt just completely different. I felt very weird and I didn't know what was going on spiritually. But, um, someone had gotten back to me and I just was like, you know, I'm confused why you said that, you know, yes, I've like prayed that prayer a lot. Like I, I was just confused, you know, so they had gotten back to me and, um, they had said, well, she wanted to make sure you would receive everything God had for you. No. When I look back over that, I want to state this because I believe I was experiencing a discrepancy as far as who God is and kind of the words someone is saying to me in that moment. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with surrendering to God. Um, it was just confusing because she was like asking me, have I done that? And it's like, yes, <laughs> like, yes, I have, you know, but it was very confusing to me because it made me confused. Like I hadn't done these things for God. Okay. But the point of me sharing this is she had mentioned she wanted to make sure that I had received everything God had for me through me surrendering through me doing all these things right <laughs> when it comes to god when it comes to the things god does god gives freely okay the bible talks about how we have found grace in his sight again not because of any of our works
that is who God is. Pretty much our walk with God is based on faith. Does that make sense? So when we receive, you know, it's by faith. It's not us performing and and doing all these things. So as she was saying that in the prayer, I believe I was sensing this discrepancy between who God really is and her making me feel like I had to do all these things to receive that healing. And that's really important to understand because when it comes to a relationship with God in general, that is what we are taught in Christianity and the church a lot. This religion that we have to do all these things So we can receive God's love or his favor. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, you know, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Okay. So I'm sharing that one because... It wasn't about me doing all these things to receive from God. And I I want you to hear me, hear me, hear me, because this is the church. This is Christianity. It's so works focused. It's so focused on do all these things for God. And many people are doing that and they're not receiving certain things from God or you know, they're exhausted from performing and not really experiencing his love and the relationship that we're meant to have with him. That is, you know, the things he freely gives. Like, did you know in the Bible, there are things that we already have through him. He's already blessed us with that we receive by faith. Did you know that? A lot of us have been taught, no, we have to do all these things. You know, there's a, there's a verse, I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah. And it says, possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. And I was reading that, I was talking to God and I was like, I was just like, wow, it really spoke to me. And I was like, wow, Lord, like. A lot of people say when it comes to like the Israelites, you know, that God didn't let them enter the promised land, which it says in the book of Hebrews, they didn't enter in because of unbelief, but understand, understand God had given them that rest. That rest was already theirs. Understand the Israelites, they never received that rest that God was trying to give them. This is why he tells them, set aside a day of Sabbath. Because it's the rest that's found only in him. The Israelites... They never received that rest, and they didn't enter in because of unbelief. They were looking at their works. It didn't have to do with their lack of obedience. It specifically says that in the book of Hebrews. But based on this verse I was reading, it says, Possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. It doesn't say that he's going to give you or will give you. It says he's already given it to them. It says just possess it. Possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. He has given it to you already. And I just was reading that. (laughs) I was like, wow. Many people, you know, look at all of this as God didn't let them enter the promised land. No. 
the the Israelites they never received that. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. He had already given them that rest. He had already given them that land. Possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. It's not God that was trying to hold that back from them. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it in source. It wasn't God that was holding that back from them. God had already given it to them. And there are so many things in the Bible, so many promises, so many things in the Bible that God has already given us. You realize that, you know, words in the Bible, there are, there are promises. There are promises for us to rest in. God wasn't holding that back from them. They didn't receive it. But God had already given it to them. And there are so many things that God has already given to us. But we're taught in religion and Christianity that we have to do all all these things. And many of us, we end up performing, we end up doing all these things. You know, you already have the love of God. It says, the love of God has been shed abroad into our hearts. You know, you don't perform for God's love or do all these things to have God's love. Or that he would just love you. I literally used to pray prayers begging and pleading God to love me. But had God loved me that whole time? Yes, I already had that love. I just didn't understand that. There are so many things we already have that the word, you know, says. But we're just not taught in that way. Okay, this just came out. (laughs) That was completely unplanned. But see it in that way, okay? That, you know, that verse, possess the land that the Lord God hath given you. And I was reading and I was like, wow, God, you know, you aren't the one trying to hold that back from them, trying to keep the Israelites from entering into the promised land. Because a lot of people kind of painted in that way, that they they weren't doing enough. No, God had already given them the land. It didn't even say will give you or is going to give you. It said that the Lord God hath given you, has given you. And there are so many things that we have been given that we must take hold of and receive and in a sense possess that the enemy doesn't want you to. He doesn't want you to take hold. He doesn't want you to possess those things that we have in Christ. Like I said in the book of Ephesians, it says we have been blessed in all with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, so that's one thing that um, 
kept coming up. Like I said, that was completely unplanned. Um, but and wasn't wasn't even what I was going to go into. But that's totally fine because I had that realization at one point, and um, I just have not shared it on this channel yet. So, but. <clears throat> Basically around this time, like I said, these kind of discrepancies, I think, were coming up. And that's the thing, too. When you have the Holy Spirit or you understand who he is and you spend time with him and you understand his word, you're going to have these moments. Sometimes they might not be the most clear, but you're going to have these either checks come up in your spirit or you're going to sense things or you're going to feel this sense of discrepancy or maybe it will come in the form of like something doesn't feel right so even though it's very subtle what the person was sharing with me you know and saying you know I just want to make sure you are receiving everything from God that you should when she asked you know have I surrendered to God? And she actually like led me in like a prayer of surrendering to God. Even though it's very subtle and that's probably what she was taught, my spirit was picking up on this sense of discrepancy. Obviously it was coming in the form of confusion at the time, but it was picking up on this discrepancy of, you know, who my God is. My God is a God of rest. My God, he, he is a God that um, gives freely. I have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Um, it is not about me doing things. It is simply receiving by faith. It's not about me performing and, and doing all these things to receive what he has for me. But I could even maybe argue and say, those things are already mine, depending on what I believe about the word. So I don't know if anyone will ever need to be reminded of that, but if you ever are around to anyone and you might feel that, whether in a church, whether um, in another Christian place, whether being around another Christian, depending on, you know, what they're telling you, sometimes you can have those discrepancies kind of come up in your spirit, but I didn't realize that was what was happening at the time. But as a result, at the time, because I didn't realize that, I started feeling like God wasn't close anymore. This deep relationship that I had with God, I felt like I didn't have that anymore, as strange as that sounds. And I didn't understand what was going on. And like I said, I thought the enemy had like led me to this place or maybe through them laying their hands on me, they had somehow imparted some sort of spirit that was like now affecting my relationship with God. I know, guys, it's a lot, but <laughs> there's a lot going on at the time. So, but this led me to just pray for that back. I was absolutely devastated. And at this point, I didn't even care about the healing that I had been seeking for. You know, I just wanted it because I wanted to be able to fulfill what God had for me. And I knew when I was in the position I was in that I, I couldn't when I was better and like that. And I was struggling with my heart. But I didn't even care about that anymore because that relationship with God surpasses anything. And it's like if I don't have him, I have nothing. And so basically, um, this led me to um, sitting in my car and I just was trying to get to a place of quiet where, you know, it was just me and God, you know, no noise around me or anything. And I just was talking to God or he had just started ministering to me because I had been praying and I was just so upset. Like I was literally crying, feeling like I somehow didn't have that relationship with God anymore that I, I did have and everything was different. And I felt God show me that one, I was running on exhaustion at the time. 
and I was constantly busy. Like I was spiritually exhausted. I was living with a person that constantly was like always trying to have me do things spiritually, whether it was like going to like worship, like at night at the place she worked, whether it was going to Bible study, going to church, like I was constantly doing all these things. I don't have a problem with any of this, but the fact that I was struggling even to just walk around or be physical in any way, like my body couldn't handle that at the time. So but here I was in this place where I was trying to do all these things um, because those were kind of her roles. And um, a lot of us as Christians, we are taught to do all, all these things. We are taught to um, go to church, go to Bible study, just do all these things spiritually, be spiritually busy. And I felt God show me that um, that closeness that I experience is through that place of rest. It's the very opposite of all of that. And again, I'm not saying I have a problem with any of these things, but I'm saying when it comes to your relationship with God, understand this rest we have with him. And I felt God showing me, you know, he is a God of rest. In the book of Exodus, it says, you know, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And so it was really amazing because in that moment, I realized, you know, God, God was still there. He hadn't left. I still had that relationship with God. And if anything, I was just learning another facet of him or even just having that confirmation of who he is in the midst of all that. But this is so important because I really felt God ministering to this to me a lot, especially when I've been asking God, God, why, why are people not feeling your presence? Why, why are different things happening in Christianity? You know, what is it? Cause I want, every one of you to experience God's presence. And I know God wants you to know that he is close with you. Excuse me. Yes. Are there times where we won't feel him or where he feels absent? Yes. And I've experienced that in my life, but I believe part of that is from some of the teachings that we are taught that again, affect how we experience God. And so this is something that God has been bringing up a lot is rest, rest. You know, it's in that quiet place, in that place of um, just stillness where, I mean, really you're alone with yourself, but really you're alone with God, you know, it's just you and God, but it's in that place where, where we're just, we're still before him. It's in that place of rest. It's not in that place where we're busying ourselves, including our mind being distracted and thinking about all these things, but just this place of rest. And that is what I felt God I'm repeatedly showing me, I can honestly say when I really started understanding rest, God started revealing it to me more, teaching me it more. Not only did my relationship with God feel so much closer, but also there was a healing that happened very, very quickly in that amount of time. And I don't know if it was because I had spent so much time with God over the years that that time was now happening or if there is something through rest and there was a very rapid shift of healing happening because of that rest because that rest in and of itself is so healing 
And that's something I've been questioning because I noticed it's associated and paired in the Bible a lot together. But I also believe, you know, the way God has designed it, rest. I believe we receive from God best through this place of rest. And by receive, I don't mean like receiving things per se, but I mean when God wants to minister to you, when God wants to spend time with you, it is through that place of rest, okay? But God, it, it's just amazing to me how God has designed it. Like we are forced to rest in our lives. Rest is so important. We're forced to rest in our lives to um, to hear from God, to receive from God, essentially. Because I don't mean, most times it's not audible. It's a still small voice that I felt God reminding me of that earlier today, you know, when it is either Elijah or Elisha, but, you know, God's voice was not in the earthquake. It was not in the rock, but it was a still small voice. And how do we connect with God and are able to hear from him um, in our spirit, in a sense? Because a lot of times it's words that come up in your spirit and minister to your spirit or your heart. But it's in that place of rest. It's in that place of quiet. It's in that place of us just being still before him. In that place of rest where we're not... We're not working. We're not doing all these things. And like I said, our mind isn't even, you know, racing. But it's amazing to me because I look at the way God has designed it and to spend time with him. <laughs> We're practically forced to rest. Which is so vital for us in our lives. And um, I'm going to share a verse that I came across in the book of Isaiah um, a few days ago. And I love it when God, you know, leads me to verses or I come across verses and they confirm what God has been teaching me and showing me and sh <laughs> shows me directly in the word for anyone that has questioned it or try to make me feel like I'm wrong. But I know, you know, this is what God has taught me and I know it's been hugely life changing. And so the other day, I came across this verse, and I want to share it with you. <clears throat> and it's Isaiah 28, verse 12. It says, To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Isn't that beautiful? You know, it says, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. And that's one of the amazing things I think about how God has designed this spiritually. Is that there's a refreshing that we receive, that we have when we are resting with the Lord. There's a refreshing. And how when we are in, when we are, when we are trying to receive from God, when you're trying to spend time with God, we're, we're in this place, this posture where we're practically forced to rest, to receive from him. And again, by receive, I mean just to hear from him, right? To connect to God. Because like I said, then our minds aren't racing and our spirits aren't cluttered. But we're in that place of stillness, that place of rest where we're not doing anything, where we're really able to um, hear from him and whatever he's trying to show us or minister to us. But what else I think is amazing is the way God has designed this spiritually is this place of rest is the optimal place for not only our nervous system to be in, but our health. 
Isn't that amazing? You know, there is a state um, when you're not in fight or flight that is called rest and digest. And that is the place you want your body to be in. Rest and digest. And so even in that place of rest, spiritually, the way God has designed it, he has designed that for us to continually be in this optimal place on a physiological level where we're not doing all these things we're not we're not stressed we're not anxious we're just in this place of rest and it's a place where our minds are at rest we're not focusing on our works or our sins. It's a place where our hearts are at rest, our souls and spirits are at rest. And we can even argue our physical bodies are at rest because, I mean, you can be laying down when you're spending time with God or at least leaning back and relaxing. But it's also that we are learning to live not from our own strength but from his, as we are coming to him, as we are receiving his love, as we are being filled with his strength, empowered by his spirit. And I want to share the story of Mary and Martha to show a biblical example of this. I'm not going to go into everything this story is referring to, but I wanted to share this example to show that rest is what God longs for us to know and, and to have. So we know the story of Mary and Martha, right? Martha's busy serving and working. And Mary is just sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to him. Um, and I'm sure the Lord is ministering to her and talking to her and just teaching her many things. And Martha says, you know, I have my, been my sister, therefore, to help me. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you're worried about many things. But only one thing is needful or one thing is necessary, depending on the version you read. Mary has chosen the good part and will not be taken from her. And I love being able to go to specific Bible stories and examples to show, like, this is biblical, this is God's word, this is not just my experiences, because you have a lot of people that want to kind of argue. This is straight directly in God's word. Okay. And I want to understand, you know, Jesus, I'm sure he is so pleased to be with Mary, to be with her. Um, you look at Jesus, was Jesus upset that Mary was just sitting at his feet still? No. No, I'm sure it brought him so much joy just to be with her and spend time with her and minister to her and teach her so many things. And I want you to understand that's how the Lord looks at you. You know, he is so overjoyed just to be with us. And he is the person that he, he, he longs to minister to us. That's who he is. And to fill us, like it says in the book of Jeremiah, you know, here is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest and the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So Mary was just sitting at his feet. And I want to understand, you know, when you come to him, you can just sit at his feet. Knowing the rest you have in him. Knowing that you are accepted in the beloved as it says in the Ephesians. Knowing you are so loved 
by him and it brings him so much joy to spend time with you and and be with you he is not looking down on you he loves you you are his his joy his delight and you can just rest Your mind can be at rest when you spend time with him. You don't have to worry about and go over how you sinned or all these things that you still have to do for God. See, there can be a place where all our works flow out of that place of rest. Because he is empowering us with his spirit. He is filling us with his strength and his love is changing and transforming us. When it comes to a Christian, you know, your relationship with God, all you have to do is just sit at his feet, receive his love for you, and watch as his love transforms you. Watch as his love works through you. I'm not saying, you know, don't do anything as a Christian or don't have works, but I'm saying that many are so weary and there's so much performing in Christianity and and trying to do all these things for God. I want you to understand that's the relationship that he longs to have with you, this relationship of rest. Or you just sit at his feet Another story of Mary and Martha. There are so many things he longs to give you through that place of rest. And for you to just receive. For him to just pour out his love to you. And for you to experience that refreshing that comes from his presence and that rest we only have through him. And so this video has been a number of things, but I love you guys so much. I really hope this video can help any of you. Yeah, I love you guys. I hope you guys are all doing all right and God bless you.